Go on and give it to them. That's right. That's right. That's right. But if you got in mind to leave anybody anything, mm -hmm. and they living like the devil, <laughs> you better be sure right. that what you're leaving them don't make them comfortable in their sins. That's right. That's right. And the way to do that, just evaluate how they're living right now. That's right. Amen. You don't want to add sin to sin. That's right. That's right. And you got a second. If my son had a second wife, I ain't leaving him no money. No, no. No way. No, why? I'm not going to feed his adultery. No, sir. That's right. That's right. Strength his hands. I'm strengthening the hand of an evil doer. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. No, no, I'm not doing that. No way. Huh? No, no. My God, I, I, if you got a man out there <laughs> and you know he want to get his body changed over from William to Wilhelmina, <laughs> I, I'm not talking about my brother now. <laughs> but I know there's a Wilhelmina watching. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, and they can't afford to have surgery so they can go to hell. <laughs> then uh, if you see what the objectives are. Yeah. You won't, don't leave them money to finance their hypocrisy. No, you don't, sir. You understand? That's right. You know, so when you leave someone something, you can't leave them anything that'll cause them to sin. That's, That's right. right. Is that right? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> can't leave Wilhelmina nothing. That's right. <laughs> can't leave them anything that will cause them to sin. And you got to be careful. Oh, yeah. Because that's one of those sins that will follow on after. Oh, so right. if you got money or whatever it may be that you may have, right, uh, you want to give someone something. An inheritance. Listen at this. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 21. What is it? An inheritance. A inheritance. May be gotten hastily may be, at the beginning. An inheritance may be gotten hastily in the beginning. But the end thereof. But the end thereof. Shall not be blessed. Shall not be blessed. See, a lot of time you give someone something quickly. But then, besides it being a help to them, it destroys them. That's right. That's right. Because they use it wrongfully. Amen. Right. You know, so if you're able to give whatever you got for whoever the loved ones are in your life, right. if you don't want to wait till you die, you want to give it to them now because you see that they, they can use it now, right. fine. Right. There's no transgression. Where there is no law, there's no transgression. All right, Dan, that's enough of that. Uh, I don't know how much time I have, but I do have some more time. We covered a lot of ground already. Oh, yes. I mean, already. So let's, let's dive. I want to deal with the condition. Uh, of the people and the condition uh, of the churches. You better give me Zephaniah. We want to talk about air pollution. Amen. Air pollution. Mm -hmm. I believe Zephaniah, the third chapter, Zephaniah if I'm correct. Chapter three. Zephaniah chapter 3, and we're at verse, at verse 1. All right. At verse 4. Her prophets are light. Her, li her prophets are light. A prophet is a messenger. Mm -hmm. Now, light have more than one meaning. There's light that will guide you in darkness. Then there's light that will lead you into darkness. That's right. And say, what do you mean? I can be lightheaded, mm -hmm. unstable, don't have no soundness, and because the lightness that is in me. I can lead you into error, lead you into false teaching, lead you into something that gives you false hope, lightheaded. Light, that's, right. that's right. Too flexible, no soundness. no soundness. Everything that jump, everyone that put a ring in front of you, you jump through it like a poodle. That's right. Lightheaded. Light. Right. Mm -hmm. No soundness, no foundation. Everything that sounds good, you run after it. That's right. Lightheaded. That's right. Every time someone presents you to something that sounds good, you go after it. Lightheaded. Light. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Her prophets are light. Her prophets are light. And treacherous persons. That's terrible. Treacherous. They have a light-headed leader. Oh, yeah. No soundness in his teaching. Yeah. Teaching is very flexible. Mm -hmm. Teach anything, nothing that will ground you and settle you and make you a real man and a real woman. Amen. That's right. He condone what God is against. Mm -hmm. He's against what God condones. That's right, that's right. Listen. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. And her priests have her preachers have polluted the sanctuary. <laughs> How did it come about? Her priests have, her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. And how did it come about? They have done violence to the law. The law violence. have been violated. That's right. Terminated. How did the law, how was the law violated? Now, whenever teaching is taking place mm -hmm. in religion, 
then that teaching is supposed to be centered around God to develop the people who are serving God. Teaching can cause you to turn against God, just like teaching can turn you to God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Let me say this again, viewer, and you that are here. Teaching can turn you against God. Teaching can turn you to God. Both can be done by using Scripture. That's right. Both can be done by the usage of Scripture. It's called Scripture manipulation. That's right. Scripture manipulation. What do you mean? I see Jesus down in Jordan being baptized by his cousin John coming straightway up out the water, heavens open up. The Spirit of God descends as a dove mounting upon him. A voice speaks from heaven, declaring, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I can manipulate that and make three gods. That's right. I look at Jesus, I look at a dove, and I look at a voice and start counting. That's right. Manipulating. The scriptures. That's right. The scripture that says money answer for all things. Oh. You know how that been manipulated. Amen. That's why now you have the blessing plans and the prosperity plans being preached all over the world. When I was in Sierra Leone, West Africa, as poor as that place is, at the false church I taught at, even there they was trying to manipulate people. And the people was already poor. You that are watching me now, haven't you seen the preacher get up and say, the Lord just spoke to me, church, and he said he want a second offering. Don't lie and say the Lord told you. That's right. You ain't got to lie on God about it. Thanks. We're gonna, we need another offering. We're going to raise another offering. All right, let's get busy. That's right. You ain't got to lie and say the Lord, you know, like Robert Tilton. <laughs> Tilton sit behind his big desk. And he'd be talking, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh, what did you say, Lord? <laughs> what did you say, Lord? Got to get a Honda. Got to get up. He'd, he'd jab that tongue out when he get ready. My Lord. And you suckers. <laughs> That's right. The whole lot of you suckers. Whole lot. Right, old Mr. Tilt. Send him your money. That's right. Why is it that you got to send money to be blessed? Have you ever thought of that sucker? That's right. Huh? That's right. Why is it you got to send money to be blessed? And Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. Boy, you ain't got no money. That's right. That's right. Polluting sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Inviting unscriptural practice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Inviting unscriptural practice. Place a germ in the midst of the sanctuary which enhances contamination. That's right. So now a virus sets among the people through the way of false teaching. And it starts spreading. That's right. One to another. That's right. False teaching, polluting. Sanctuary. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. You better go to the 1 Timothy 2.12. Mm -hmm. I want to give you an example of pollution being let in. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and at verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. No what? Nor to usurp authority over the man. Now that's the air vent. <laughs> that's right. Huh? That's right. That's the air vent to keep all contamination out. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. Are you listening? That's right. That's a good filter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't it? That's right. That's a good filter. Amen. But what people do, they go try to clog that filter. Mm -hmm. Now remember the filter says, I suffer not a woman to teach. Now, 
Here come air pollution. Air pollution. You all damn one of your mothers in the church. Look right in that camera, mother. You are ordained one of the mothers in the church uh -huh. and make her a pastor. That's right. I'm watching you now. <laughs> you make her a pastor. Right. Or, you know, some of you preachers, your wife is your assistant. assistant. That's pollution. That's pollution. Or the mothers in the church become a bishop. Right in one of the churches. See, that's pollution because what you're doing, you are inviting something that God did not intend it. See, I'm Pastor Jennings. Come here, Sister Jennings. This is Sister Jennings. The program is not called Geno Jennings and Darlene Ministries. That's right. God didn't call you, did he? No. You're not a preacher, are you? No, you don't feel it in your bosom, do you? <laughs> now, viewer, to show you that your preacher is robbing you, mm -hmm. if the ministry is of God, it should take on God's name. That's right. That's right. So why is your ministry is some preacher and his wife ministry? That's right. You're supposed to advertise God. That's right. That's right. That's right. My wife is not the first lady. She don't call the shots here. She got to work here like everybody else. She got to follow what we preach like everybody else, or my wife will go to hell like anybody else. Now, some of you would say, oh, Lord, if I was your wife, I wouldn't take that. You ain't got that to worry about, do you? <laughs> The preacher wife is the loudest, craziest thing in the house. Right. They want that spotlight. They want that limelight. You that are watching me now, some of you men, you can't make a move unless you talk to the pastor's wife. That's true. Pastor wife says sit down, you sit down. That's air pollution. That's right. Pastor wife chastises you, you are chastised. That's pollution. Win, win. Are you listening? Amen. When you have pollution, have you ever been driving on, you know, on Route 13 or 95, and all of a sudden, a nice summer day, and you ride through some of those country areas, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, man, a smell hits your nose. Woo-wee. I gossip like some that undead more over. You had your windows down, enjoying the nice breeze, and all of a sudden, something just hits you. When you, you could be talking, it's like you go in your mouth, you be <laughs> Just tie you up. That's right. Pollution. A dry wind. Listen. In Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 11. Listen good. A dry wind. A dry wind. Of the high places. Of the high places. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. Toward the daughter, toward of, my people, the daughter of my people. Not to fan. Not to fan. Nor to cleanse. Nor to cleanse. Even a full wind. Even a full wind. From those places. From those places. Shall come unto me. Shall come unto me. And stinking breeze. <laughs> That's right. This would have fell in the churches of foul or odor in the form of false teaching. That's right. That's right. Brothers that are ministers, mm -hmm. that are watching me anywhere in the world, Amen. why is your wife, the first lady, in your church? That's right. Peter was married. Yes, he was. You don't read where his wife was the first lady. No. The preacher wife must be a humble woman. That's right. Not looking for limelight and notoriety. 
She can't be a spotlight lover. That's right. She has to be humble. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet Discipline, spirit. firm. That's right. Meek but firm. That's right. That's right. It's time for her to hold her ground. She'll hold her ground. Don't let nobody move her. That's right. Not intimidated by nobody. No. Are you listening? Amen. Doing what? Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Not loud and crazy. That's right. Like a baboon. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Preacher wives have no business getting up in church when she testifies. Let the church say amen. No. Let the church say amen again. Right. Say amen again. No. Meek and quiet. The book says she got to have what? Meek and quiet spirit. Who values that? Which is in the sight of God of great price. Is of great value. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. They are treacherous persons. Her priests Her are priests has polluted the sanctuary, the churches, the mosque, the synagogue. That's right. All of you are contaminated. contaminated. <laughs> Amen. Churches today have been contaminated so long. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, God is not preached. That's right. Viewer, if you don't believe me, while I'm talking or while you taping, look at any preacher that come on before we do. Look at any preacher that come on after we do. See that they all have one thing in common. Mm -hmm. Prosperity. That's right. That's right. Money have took the place of God. That's right. Hasn't it? Yes. Money have took the place of God. Today you can't even get prayer unless the preacher want money. That's right. You can't even go visit to see a preacher unless you got to pay at the door. That's true. Money have took the place of worship. That's right. And this is what have contaminated and have polluted the people. You know, there's some foul odors that hit you so fast and make you ill. That's right. Now, viewer, the word of God is a safeguard. From pollution. Isn't it? Amen. See, if you dress right, you can work around certain chemicals. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. If you have on the right gear, That's right. That's right. the right protection, Amen. you can work around certain chemicals without being, without breaking out with the rash, without itching, without being affected, without your breathing being altered. Why? You got the right protection on. That's right. So if you have the right spiritual protection, the right armor on. Because now what the preachers are engaging in is chemical warfare. Dropping false teaching among the people and watch it spread like smoke and people are breathing it in. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It's a chemical reaction. You get the woman that no, she ain't supposed to be preaching. All of a sudden, she started hanging around that bomb that's constantly being dropped. It's all right, you can preach. You got a job to do. Don't let the Lord take it from you. Don't let the devil rob you of your blessing. Drum, bomb, just keep dropping. Before you know it, she started inhaling it. Keep inhaling it. Before you know it, she walked around. I was a sinner one day, and the Lord was dealing with me. That's right. I polluted. I polluted. After a while, she's jumping. In the way them old mothers do. Ooh. Are you listening? That's right. You have allowed yourselves to be influenced because you're not stable. If you have stability, a foundation, nobody, including your daddy, That's right. or family member can come to you and persuade you to detour in your belief from God. That's right. Nobody. But because of the sound of the vain jangler, the vain jangling that's given off 
a good noise. There are some that says, well, you know, I'm going to visit this religion today and, because I want to see how they do. I, I know the truth. I, I, I know the truth. Uh, and, and, the, and the Father is in me. And, and I, I just want to check out the religion and see how it is. God may be in you, but are you in him? Because if the stability is not there, like I had a brother, and undoubtedly he's watching, who I told some years ago, don't bother the black Hebrew Israelites because you're not scripturally inclined. Jesus said, let them alone. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. But he was overzealous. It wasn't following instructions, so the black Hebrew Israelites put questions to him he couldn't answer. And they made him denounce truth until he denounced Jesus' birth by being created by the Almighty and said Jesus was nothing but a bastard. Blaspheme against the Son of Man. He said, Jesus was not conceived by the Holy Ghost. He was nothing more than a bastard. He said, Mary and Joseph fornicated. Contamination. See, he was among a virus and he wasn't dressed right to protect himself. Every religion has some truth without question. But when you walk among that smoke, mm -hmm. you better be protected enough. You know what to digest and what not to digest. That's right. Let us put on the whole armor. Uh-oh. In the book of Romans, chapter This is 13. the type of protective gear mm -hmm. you got to have. It's time to suit up now, folks. Right. Right. Church, it's time to suit up now. That's right. Amen. Amen. Many of you that are watching me now and going from church to church, church to church, just having fellowship service. Amen. A group of so-called apostolic people just jumping every Saturday night or every Sunday. Come out, we have in church a bunch of pollution. Because if truth is not there, if there is no ventilation, you'll find people now start saying amen to lies. That's true. Is that right? That's right. Listen good. First in Romans chapter 13 and verse 12. What is it? The night is far spent. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works cast of darkness. Cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. And in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. Now we're going to break down the armor of light. Of light. Where, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. How much of it? The whole armor of God. How much of it? The whole armor of God. All of it. Take unto you the whole armor of God for what reason? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. This is the evil day. This is your protection suit. Amen. I respect truth. If truth, if the Jehovah Witnesses tell me something true, mm -hmm. I will respect it. <laughs> Even if all the rest they got is wrong. That's right. That's right. If the religion of Judaism tell me something true, like there is one God, and that's what they believe, I got to say amen to it. That's right. That's right. If the Muslim tell me something true, that there is no God but one, I got to say amen to it. Amen. Are you listening? Satan. The image of light and the master of darkness. Are you listening? Satan. The image of light and the master of darkness. What do you mean the image of light? He reflects artificial light. He pretends to be light. His light is artificial because it don't lead you to anything real. That's right. But yet he's the master of darkness. He's subtle and he's cunning. So therefore, you go to church, 
And you say, oh, my preacher's preaching from the Bible because he read a few verses. You know, he, he, he read it. A few verses and whatnot, and you hear your preacher reading. Now we're gonna let the church just read along with me. <laughs> and three things I was beautiful and stood upon, beautiful both God and man, the unity of brother and the love of neighbor and man and the wife that agree together. There are sorts of men my soul hateth, and I am greatly offended at the life and poor man and proud, a rich man that is a liar and old adultery. And Just enough to get you warmed up, you know. Very dramatic. Very dramatic. But in the midst of reading light, his message is what? Darkness. Let's get the Old Testament money answer for all things. Let's, let's see how they utilize this. This usage of the money. Now, we, we're going to go to light. And we're going to show you how pollution crept in by using this scripture. We go right to light and show you the pollution that has set in. Because of the way churches have it now, not even God would do anything for you. That's right. Unless you got some money. Is that right? I don't want no God like that, man. I just don't want no God that can't do nothing for me unless I got a buck. I may lose my job. That's right. I may lose my job. That's right. Book of Ecclesiastes. Vera, I want you to get this about this money. About this money. Give me about the 10th chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Begin at verse 18. At verse 18. All right. By much slowfulness. By much slowfulness. The building decayeth. Yes. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. Uh -huh. A feast is made for laughter. Yes. And wine maketh merry. Yes. But money. But money. Answereth all things. Hold it. <laughs> Listen at this. But money answereth all things. Preacher, sure hype you up. You don't believe that? Let me hear you say yes. That's right. <clears throat> they get people on their feet. God don't want everybody to be poor. That's a lie. You see the poor you have with you always. If God made everybody rich, who would have a testimony? I've been delivered. That's right. If God will make everybody rich and have everybody up on a mountain, who will have a testimony that God picked me up when I was down? Listen at this scripture. A feast is made for laughter. A feast is made for laughter. And wine make it merry. Wine make you merry, make you happy. That's why the state store that your preacher go to is called, you know, we get wine and spirits. That's right. Mm -hmm. But money answereth all things. All, all things? All things. You sure? All things. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's break it down. Break it down. Kind of Question is, what kind of thing does money answer for? Kind of well, Pastor Jennings, the Bible says answer for all things. All things mean all things. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to show you in the scripture where money can't buy something. And, and yet Acts, it was offered. That's right. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we'll begin in verse 17. Are you listening? Amen. I want to itemize it. You see what I mean by making the scriptures harmonize? That's right. That's right. That's right. Listen. Acts chapter 8, we'll begin in verse 17. Listen, viewer, keep in mind, the book says, money answer for all things. All things. Now you got to find out what kind of things they're speaking of. That's right. Because there are some things money cannot buy. That's right. Listen at this. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. What? And they received the Holy Ghost. Yes. <coughs> and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. He offered money. He offered them money. For what reason? Saying, give me also this power. He wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. That's right. In other words, he wanted to purchase God. That's right. Yeah. Yet the book said money and for all things, but listen here. Saying, give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. But Peter said unto him, 
thy money perish with thee. Your money ain't going to work, Simon. That's right. Why? Because thou hast you thought, thought that the gift of that God, God's gift, the Holy Ghost, may be what? Purchased purchase. with money. Purchase. Viewer, purchase. ask yourself, why the entire telecast of a church spend 30 minutes or an hour begging you for money? That's right. Oh, misunderstand me. Yes, it does take money to run things. But even the church, the scriptures itemize a way for money to be collected. Be collected. In the book of Galatians, or rather in the book of 1 Corinthians. Listen. Chapter 16. What is it? And we'll begin at verse 1. All right. Now concerning, now concerning, the, concerning collection the collection for the saints. For the church. As I have given order to the churches. There's a certain way for it to be done. That's right. Now, right. you're a preacher. I'm dealing with pollution. Right. You're a preacher. Here, pollute. I'm down to 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes of pollution left. All right. <laughs> Your preacher, here, take that scripture, money answer for all things. And here, pollute 10, 15, 20,000 people with it. That's right. He'll tell you, you that want a blessing from the Lord? The Lord just spoke to me. Shalom Asada. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me and told me to tell you there's a thousand more that's wait what did you say Lord <laughs> not a thousand Lord ten thousand Lord the Lord just told me there's ten thousand dollars more in the house and the Lord told me that if you just simply give your last he will give it to you by the weekend 100 fold. My sister in law called me and told me a friend of hers took her to a church, and the preacher got up and told them that if you want to lose weight, the Lord says give $500 today. And they came up there, and no one lost nothing. <laughs> now, what make a person believe these gimmicks? Desperation. Viewers, you're desperate. That's right. That's why you'll believe any lie that these preachers will tell you. That's right. You lose weight from God for five hundred dollars? <laughs> Jenny Craig not even offering that. No. <laughs> Preachers will tell you, the more you give, then God will really help you and bless you if you give all of it. Now, wait a minute. How do you define giving all? Somebody say, I gave God all my money. Then that means you ain't got a bank account or checking account or savings account. That's the truth of it. The true definition of giving all is giving total self. That's right. That's the true definition of giving all. That's right. Of giving total self. Now, once that preacher tells you to give it all to God, and he got it, that's why he got his, his limousine. That's right. And yacht. And jet. I mean, if he work with his own hands and by his own, that's his business. That's right. I mean, you got people stricken with poverty right in the church. Yeah. And he won't lift a finger to help them. Amen. But yet the book says money answer for all things, but all what? That's right. Viewer, if you got to lie and manipulate and con to get a buck, which is what your preacher is doing. See, your preacher's a con man. Right. Old Western terms, they called him a carpetbagger. Yes, right. That's right. Fortune teller. Everything now, lie, lie, centered around a dollar. That's right. They lie for money. Mm -hmm. It's like you folk that go to the terror, you know, those that flip cards. Mm -hmm. Who's supposed to be this great divine one. Right. 
You got to pay to get a vision. That's right. So you come bring your dirty hands and they look at them, flip a few cards, and Sister Troy. That's right. <laughs> Sister Troy will give you a revelation. They say this is your lifeline. Ain't nothing but cracks in your hands. Mm -hmm. That's right. Calluses on some. Mm -hmm. This is your lifeline. God do not divine falsely. That's right. That's right. And the prophets therefore listen, divine. Listen, in listen, the, in listen. The book of Micah, Micah, chapter 3. Chapter 3. And verse 11. Verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. The heads thereof judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. The preachers teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Sister, don't look at me. Look at me real good. Don't you ever let no preacher, including your pastor, come to you and tell you the Lord told him to tell you, mm -hmm. give him your house. That's right. Brother, don't you let your preacher come to you and tell you the Lord told him to tell you, give him your house. Amen. He want a house, let him go to work and buy it himself. That's right. That's right. Someone said, people really do that? Yes. Many apostolic churches are teaching that. And the scripture they are using is that they sold their position. Come on, let's get that fast. Because that's something that never was dealt with on television. That's right, man. This something in the second chapter of Acts was never dealt with on television. Acts chapter in two? fact, it hardly ever was dealt with even on radio. That's right. You apostolic folk, get this. Acts chapter 2, when we begin at verse Come on, you got to move quick, son, my time is moving. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yes. And all that believed were together. Yes. And had all things common. Had all things common. And sold their possessions. They sold their possessions. And goods. And goods. And parted them, and parted to, all them to all men. As every man had need. And then what? And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to now, house. Now, in another place, they sold their possessions and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Yeah. Now, Neither, listen at this. Acts chapter 4 and verse 34. Come on, son. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Yes. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And, and brought the prices of those things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. This scripture, many of you bishops have used to tell the church members you can't own property. That's right. Use a liar. Amen. You bishops right. have used this scripture right. and said because they sold their possessions and laid the money at the apostles' feet, feet it's a sin for saints to own property. You're a liar. Amen. If you tell me if I own property, I go to hell, then you got to see where is it a commandment right. to sell this property. That's right. You don't read where the apostles commanded for it to be done. No. They done it on their own free will. That's right. How are you going to tell me I go to hell for, for if I own property and I own my own house? That's right. That's right. How can I tell you you will go to hell for driving a Bentley and I got a rose? How can I tell you you will go to hell for having a luxury car and not collect cars? Amen. Talk to me. Amen. If, I come to, if you go to hell for something, then I go to hell for the same thing. Same thing. That's right. Come on, Ain't no special place for me and something different for you. We all walk by the same what? Same rule. And mind the same what? Same thing. By this scripture, many of you bishops taught is a sin to have a bank account. My Lord. You taught it's a sin to have a bank account. My Lord. There is no, listen, if it's a sin to have a bank account, why do the church have one? That's right. It is the members, that's the church. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. When they sold their possessions, it wasn't a commandment. No commandments. They done it willingly. That's right. 
That's, it wasn't no commandment. They never was taught they'd go to hell if they don't do it. No. no, no, no. Neither can we teach it. That's right. That's right. We can't If somebody want to give their property or give land to the church, fine. Let them give it to the church if that's what you want to do. If you change your mind and want it back, fine. We we'll give it to you back. Amen. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you, Indian giver. <laughs> That's right. I ain't going to tell you that. No. Nah. No you give it to the church, you want it back, fine. Mm -hmm. No harm. No love loss. Yes. No compromise. Yes. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. So be careful how these men manipulate scripture. Manipulate scripture. You transform your bishop into be a king. Mm -hmm. Wherein he's nothing more or supposed to be nothing more than a servant. Are you listening? Amen. If you want to do something for the preaching, give him something fine. Be sure you deserve it. Right. Don't give the false prophet nothing. That's right. Amen. Give him nothing. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> That's right. Thank God. Don't give the false prophet nothing. Give him nothing. Nothing I said. Amen. The right. only thing you have to give him is a bunch of trouble from the scriptures. That's right. Just keep knocking on his office door. Hey, Bishop, the word of God said this, and you said just give him trouble. That's right. Arise ye and depart. Come on, son. In the book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart. Rise up and get away. For this is not your this is not your rest. Uh -huh. Because it is polluted. It is what? It is polluted. It shall destroy you. I told you. That's right. We can all thank God for the day that God brought us out of pollution. brothers that were preachers in other churches, even was pastors, set up their own polluted shop. When they came here, not one did I ever go to and tell them, you got to sit down. They came in sitting. Amen. I have some women here that were woman preachers, and some was pastoring. Heard the word of God. Gave up their church. Amen. Came out of that pollution. Amen. Put on the right, now you got to put on the right protective gear oh, so when that gas come back at you, That's right. That's right. you don't start reacting all over again. That's right. Is that right? Amen. That, oh, yeah. Right. Amen. That gas come back at you and hit you, and you like, <laughs> all of a sudden you, all, you're coming down now again with the woman preacher virus. That's right. Well, now you're coming down with the Baptist syndrome. <laughs> you start coming out your testimony. Mm -hmm. Starts testifying you're trying to preach. That's right. You know what God done for me, Chad? You know God done healed me one day. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Besides praying, you're trying to preach. Preach. Preaching. Down your knees quoting about 50 scriptures. That's right. What for? Amen. You broke out with the virus that I call fossilitis. Amen. These are the symptoms of fossilitis. Scratchy throat. The changing of the voice. The moving of the hands. The jiggling of the body. And the bobbing of the head. And the kicking of the feet. Fossilitis have them bad. Amen. Trying to preach. <laughs> Anybody here ever had fossilitis? Have you ever had it? Raise your hand, let me see. <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. Raise your hand. Anybody here have fossilitis? You better raise your hands, Chris. <laughs> you better raise your hand. Yeah, fossilitis bad. That's my brother, but he had false light as bad. You had to read? Yes, sir. You had a bad case of it? Yes, sir. 
<laughs> My God, Chris had it so bad he should have been in the intensive care. <laughs> Under one of them plastic tents. Chris had it bad, man. Falsolitis. Getting up there preaching in front of two and three and four thousand people using all these words with about 30 letters in them. All them people jumping up yelling. He looked at them people. He, he like he lost his mind. He went around the pulpit yelling, Woo! Woo! Lost his mind. <laughs> Falsolitis. You got to grab someone like that and pull the script, force that mouth open, dunk, dunk, dunk. get them scriptures down in them. That's right. Get the foster light so when they clear up, they'll come back. Yep. Greetings, God bless you. <laughs> thank the Lord. I thank God now for deliverance and for his saving grace. The Lord work in mysterious ways. <laughs> foster light is simply when you find the old thing that you are delivered from starting to press, creep right back up in you. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. <laughs>